This means we are starting the show. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 830 Club. This is our virtual club. And we have um, set it up with galleries, places to talk. And we encourage you to participate. That is the main thing that we like to um, like to have happen here. Uh, so if you don't know already, the idea is to go ahead um, at appropriate times. You can unmute yourself, let our performers know what you think, interact. We are sharing a space, even though it is uh, all over the globe and virtually. So we do this periodically. Tonight's show is our Poets Theater, curated by Richard Cambridge. That happens one time a month. Uh, Richard is working on a great lineup for next um, next year. We've already got some outstanding shows lined up. Uh, Ray McNeese, a powerhouse from Cleveland. We have a um, show centering on Denise Lovertoff with some of her um, some of her uh, students and people that knew her. So that's um, just a taste of what's coming up. We will be putting in the chat a um, link that you can sign up and get a monthly reminder newsletter from us. Um, in any event, I think that that's basically my part of the program is to um, let you know what we're trying to do here at the 830 Club. So I would invite you to check out our website. Uh, some of uh, the other shows Richard's pulled together and this is enough of me talking. I'm going to turn it over to our uh, Poets Theater host, Richard Cambridge. And Richard and the team will take it away. I guess the other housekeeping thing is if any of you have technical questions, our usher, Shannon, Karen, and Jenna are on hand to help you with any of that. So welcome to the 830 Club. And Richard Cambridge, please take it away. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you once again for coming tonight. Uh, Poets Theater is in its 26th year uh, from Club Passing to Arts at the Armory to uh, where we're here now in virtual space, which in, in some ways allows me to reach across geographies and bring together people who I actually could not fly to Boston and pay for their flights and put them up in hotels. So it's, it's quite nice to be able to do this. Uh, the Winter Solstice show is always something special or magical because it deals with the light and the darkness and it does not turn away from the sadness and the joy. And it's the turning of the seasons where you've got that twilight or twilight between the lights. You've got the light of the sun and the light of the moon. And uh, all the our, uh, people tonight who are part of this show who have put it together have taken an extraordinary amount of their artistic labor and labor of love to walk us through this darkest evening of the year, as one old New England poet uh, once said. And so I'd like to introduce them. Uh, first, uh, Ann Heyman and Charlie Heyman. Ann is a master in the performance and traditions of the Gaelic harp and leads the instrument's modern revival. This year, Ann was honored with two Lifetime Achievement Awards one from the Historical Harp Society of Ireland, and the other from the Somerset Folk Harp Festival in the USA. Charlie Heyman is an acclaimed multi-instrumentalist who joins Anne's harp playing and lends his voice as the foundation of ballads, recitations, and stories. Uh, Anne and Charlie did a salon in my apartment uh, a few years ago, and Charlie, in my view, is the keeper of the flame, the storyteller keeper. Uh, he keeps those ballads alive, and uh, he, he just uh, 
really amazed me with the wealth of his knowledge. And then we also have Marianne Kreitlow, a performance poet, poet, songwriter, performance artist, and creator of musical theater. Marianne's mission statement explains her fascination with cross-pollinating genres. She loves creating and performing theme-based shows that integrate performance poetry with other artists and art forms. She is dedicated to tending the earth on her Minnesota farm, a theme oft reflected in her work. And we're gonna begin the evening with Marianne on her farm, who will be sharing uh, some of the grit and uh, some of the light. So Marianne, please uh, <laughs> take, us to your, take us to your farm. And share with Here us. Here we are. We, we might have a little bit of a cat fight in the background. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and, and Jerry has provided a little uh, background here. So that's very nice. Thank you, Jerry. Um, well, thanks for coming. I'm, I'm so impressed with um, all the people that are part of this team to put this together. I, I thank you a million times. I had this idea, I think it was. July and I contacted my old friend Tim Mason who's who did the introduction pre-introduction and I said what about if we do a winter solstice and I get Anne and Charlie Heyman to be a part of it and <laughs> and it's turned out to be a wonderful adventure and it's been great because I'm like I don't know how to do anything with the camera I don't know how to do anything with video and and Charlie's doing all this experimentation with I mean he really just put a lot into uh, doing video of the different songs and kind of weaving it all together so so thank you it's it's a real pleasure um, so we met here a couple nights last week to get some things filmed and we're going to start with a song called waiting to be born and um, to me it's like when the soul is ready to become embodied has has that yearning to be embodied and you could call it the Christ consciousness coming into being born uh, into the, the being we know as Jesus, or you could think about as just when we're ready to come into the body. And then that's followed by a, a really um, a, a fun song that actually Charlie recorded with me several years ago on a winter CD called He Fishes. And it's uh, all about how ice fishing leads to lovemaking in Minnesota, just so. So that's it. We're starting with waiting to be born. Help me find the tune, the timbre in thunder rolling through the hills. Electrify and clear me, covering my scope. Escape of majesty, court of tranquility.
eager to begin again, to begin again, wrestling with the sound of silence, the lion and the lamb were promised. Wrestling with the sound and silence, the lion and the lamb were promised. Now all the shape waiting to be born. I hold the shape. Fish swim beneath the ice, munching on plankton and toss cigars. A bright maraschino sinking down low. Or is it Rudolph's nose? Or the earth turning so the sun's gotta go? He doses his hope with peppermint schnapps. Lit like a lantern, toasty and hot. Baiting a line with big strong hands, spits of water in a coffee can. And he fishes, he fishes, he fishes. Outside the ice house, there's a shaking of the trees like brittle bone. He stokes a coleman to a brighter flare, remembers Emma's smile. And the pop and the schnapps keeps him warm out here. Big Pa Murphy whimpers at the door. Damn fish ain't biting Murphy. Let's try once more. The sky is dark. The 46 gets his lucky lure. That'll be the fix. And he fishes. He fishes. He fishes. Elvin fished too long. Emma was a little peeved at him, but he got him a walleye and a nice sunfish. He cut a fine fillet, presented it to her like a grand bouquet. He washed the fish smell off his hands while cornmeal and butter sizzled in the pan. They feast together and the night's still young and it's none of our business. What goes Same, but it's not the same. It's sort of the same, but forever new. It's like ooh, ooh, it's like you. Well, it's kind of the same, but it's not the same. It's sort of the same, but forever new. It's like ooh, ooh, it's like you.
Charlotte, you're making me happy. <laughs> That's just fun. Thank you. <laughs> Woo, do, 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 do. I got a band right here in my house. This is great. So I'm going to, uh, you'll see the piece that's coming up. I have to say the title of it. It's The Abominable Snowman's Wife. And Anne, I kept going round and round with Anne because she kept coming up with all these ideas of how we were going to stage this melting snow person. I'm going, no, no, there's nobody melting. It's it's Bigfoot's wife. Okay, so that I just needed to explain that. So Anne, I, I think we're finally straight with each other. And then that's uh, followed. You'll see the my friend Susan Schlepper is going to join us in another piece, and she'll explain that. So here we go. I hunker in the heart of winter. I am a thing waddling down icy roads, my breath slow and waxy wadded to itself. Sometimes I burrow under cedars. Low branches once weighted by heights of white form solace caves on frozen ground. Crawling in, I talk to toads and frogs and bears and to my mister, wherever he is, as if he might hear I chew frozen sap, gumming it soft, sticky, fragrant, while birds chatter snatches of lost melody. It's not depression or loneliness or even loss of grace defines me, but I do envy bare ash branches weaving in filigree, embracing frigid air against dimming light. I remember summer high on a rocky ledge, hands held up to a sun. I longed to see bright blood glow between my fingers, webbing alive with red. 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 <laughs> if I were not so heavy, so glued with weight, God could toss me up to catch the pink-rimmed horizon like tulips about to kiss some tender part of me.
originally written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and Marianne has um, put some lovely music to it. It's kind of a, it's a, the meeting is, uh, the way I've pictured is people getting back together maybe at a Christmas party or family coming back together or friends or schoolmates um, and it has kind of a melancholy feel to it. Thank you. Uh, oh, I love hearing Susan sing those songs. It, it's just so uh, enriching. Yeah. Thank you for that collaboration. Uh, I live mm -hmm. just a few blocks from Longfellow's house on the other side of Harvard Square, yeah. which is quite frankly the most wealthiest street in Cambridge. But <laughs> Longfellow's house is the only house that has a long view to the river, as if the poet was honored above everyone else. 
so that that's always uh, I've always thought that was kind of nice. Uh, yeah. But the poem itself, how did you come to choose that? It's a series of quatrains. The first two lines of each quatrain are very bright, and the the last two are very dark. And um, I have some thoughts about that. But uh, what what do you what do you make of that? Happenstance. <laughs> I'm not that deliberate, Richard. <laughs> what? what can I <laughs> Let say? things happen. Well, actually, it's several years ago. I um, was a member of the Composers Forum. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. An organization out of Minneapolis. And I found out about a competition for setting uh, a Longfellow poem from the Longfellow Chorus in uh, Portland, Maine. And so I set one song and it was chosen. And I just felt like there were these you know, a real masterful poet, the, the poem tells me how to mm -hmm. create the music and the rhythm. And it, so I just kind of like this one, that one, and, and that one, yeah, it just just asked me to. So I, I have actually set 10 of them and uh, really? performed all of them about six weeks ago. So, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. At this point, we'd like to, uh open the, the evening with questions from the audience. If people are here, if you have any questions for Marianne, uh, unmute yourselves and uh, feel free to ask some questions of what she shared with us. I have, I have a quick question. I kind of want to know what comes first. Like you do performance and you do poetry and you do music. Did they all kind of land on you at the same time or did you move from one to the other? Um, I started out as, um, when I was growing up, the whole kind of folk revival movement and um, kind of just got into to songs and then writing songs and then later kind of figuring out how to do what I was doing on guitar with piano and, um, and then actually this guy here, um, Jerry used to teach technical theater and do a lot of, uh, when I moved to Texas and, and married Jerry, then the opportunity for writing for musical theater seemed like a good fit because I wasn't really a singer songwriter. I didn't really fit in that. So that, that opened up kind of a new world to me. Kind of at this, when I reached that same period in my life where I was like enough with the confessional songs already. <laughs> Kind of done with that. <laughs> I've done them all. So um, yeah, I mean, I mean, these these days I'm primarily writing for musical theater, and I kind of flip in and out of doing um, doing poetry. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, yeah, definitely a, a a solid background is the singer songwriter thing. So thank you. I've been wondering which came which came when. <laughs> There's such a fluid fluidity between your genres, just even tonight. Uh, that's hard to do to go in that way with uh, seamless, I guess would be the word. So thank you. Yeah, you're anybody, welcome. Anybody else have some thoughts or questions for Marianne? All right. No, no questions. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. All you out there, here's your chance. You can talk to the uh, performer. You don't get this in real in live performance, obviously. <laughs> well, okay, we'll move on to our next uh, section with Anne uh, in Kilkenny, Ireland. The Kua, a cleric, she's going to be playing, also known as the Bard's Lament. She will be playing the historical Klashuk harp which believe it or not is made of high carat gold. That's the strings are 18, 20 and 22 carat gold. Uh, and probably more than anyone else is responsible for uh, the archeology span of resurfacing the old Celtic traditions and, and the Bardic and harp traditions. And um, this particular piece uh, you're going to see um, the historical place in Ireland, the, the Grange, I believe it's called, where the solstice, where the light comes through these rocks 
and illuminates just in that perfect moment when solstice arrives. And uh, so part of this video, you'll see that. And I'd like to give a shout out to Charlie who uh, made this quite an artistic production. Uh, so uh, Anne, um, welcome to you. to be going to uh, the Celtic Junction now um, uh, at the at, that's in St. Paul, Minnesota and it's got the Owen McKiernan Library, there's a photo of it um, uh, dance studios, the Center for Irish Music, classrooms the Minnesota Irish College but uh, Celtic Junction they also have offerings for other uh, Celtic art areas although it is uh, stronger with, with Irish. And our friend uh, Danielle Emblem is going to join us on the stage there. And she's a wonderful Shanos, that's old style step dancer and uh, a fiddle player. And I have to confess that we were doing this uh, to an empty room. We were uh, playing to the camera and we didn't hoop and holler. And so Danielle dances and finishes and we we expect the audience to hoop and holler and and we didn't. So there's Danielle sitting there. So if you feel like letting loose, you know. <laughs> With a few hoops of your own. Uh, you're, you're, and woohoos and whistles, whatever, um, you're, you're most welcome. Well, here's a song that was written by Northern Irish song collector, uh, Sam Henry. And it's a song about uh, oh, the, uh, the, the shearing of the sheep and the, the walking of the wool. White the sheep that gave the wool, green the pie where they fed blue the skies above the pool where at noon they made their bed sing the garden of the sea from whose flowers we won the dye sing of sea tang wild and free from our misty isle of sky Light the hearts that love the sea Brown the face that seeks the sun Brown and happy here are we Singing till our world Storms may rave in vain. Bless 
the work by which we won shelter from the wind and rain. substitute for the 12 yeah. days of Christmas. Right. 12 uh, days of Christmas. <laughs> of what? <laughs> days of what? Natural, Natural ecology. ecology. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. All right. Uh, so. Oh, sing me one. I'll sing you one. One is the warmth giving life, giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me two? I'll sing you two. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life, giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me three? I'll sing you three. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem, two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life, giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn, long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me four? I'll sing you four. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem, two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life, giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn, long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me five? I'll sing you five. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear, four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel, three are the leaves upon the clover stem, Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life, giving sun. Long may it shine, 
Long may it burn, long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me six? I'll sing you six. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me seven? I'll sing you seven. Seven are the lobes on the white oak leaf. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who will sing me eight? I'll sing you eight. Eight are the legs of the web-spinning spider. Seven are the lobes on the white oak leaf. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me nine? I'll sing you nine. Nine are the leaflets on the hickory bud. Eight are the legs of the web-spinning spider. Seven are the lobes on the white oak leaf. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me ten? I'll sing you ten. Ten are the segments of the dragonfly's tail. Nine are the leaflets on the hickory bud. Eight are the wet legs of the web-spinning spider. Seven are the lobes on the white oak leaf. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing eleven? I'll sing eleven. Eleven pairs of teeth in the groundhog's smile. Ten are the segments of the dragonfly's tail. Nine are the leaflets on the hickory bud. Eight are the legs of the web-spinning spider. Seven are the lobes on the white oak leaf. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Who'll sing me twelve? I'll sing you twelve. Twelve are the feathers on the tail of the owl. Eleven pairs of teeth in the groundhog smile. Ten are the segments of the dragonfly's tail. Nine are the leaflets on the hickory bud. Eight are the legs of the web-spinning spider. Seven are the lobes on the white oak leaf. Six are the sides of the honeycomb cell. Five are the petals on the blossom of the pear. Four are the legs beneath the scurrying squirrel. Three are the leaf tra three are the leaves upon the clover stem. Two are the tides chasing after the moon. One is the warmth giving life giving sun. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return. Long may it shine, long may it burn. Long is the winter till the sun's return.
whatever down there or something. Well, here's an Irish take on the nativity story. One Christmas Eve to Bethlehem, Joe and me, we made our way. The frost was lying thick and white, and the winter winds did flay. The winter winds did flay, me boys, they chilled us to the bone. And we were there for the census sake, a hundred miles from home. Now Joe, he knocked on the first inn door to see if there was room. There's nothing I can do for years until the first of June. There's nothing I can do for years if you're too dignified. But if in the stable you will lay, you can step around the side. Now I was nearly nine months gone on that cold Christmas Eve. And the tale of who the father was, sure no one would believe. Sure no one would believe me, boys, the tale I tell you now, of how I came to be lying there with a donkey and a cow. Now Joe, he is a poor old fool who thinks babies come from God. And I didn't like to contradict, he's such a nice old sod. He's such a nice old sod, me boys, that him I could not tell. How in early spring, when small birds sing, I was met by Gabriel. Hail Mary dear, you're full of grace, says Gabby then to me. I have a bit of news for you, he went on pleasantly. You're going to have a baby boy, he continued with a grin. And you'll be the first to have the light without committing sin. Now it came to me as quite a shock to hear this bit of news, that I was going to have a babe the first of the Christmas Jews, that I was going to have a babe, the saviour of you all. And that's how I came to be lying there that evening in the stall. Now Joe was pacing up and down and shaking like a leaf. And when the baby boy was born, sure twas a great relief. Says I to Joe, thank God for that, in accent meek and mild. You're a Jesus Christ, says Joseph. And that's what we named the child. <laughs> A set. Oh, you guys rocked that out. Uh, thank you so much. Well, now I'd like to uh, enter another part of our show. Uh, the poet Ethna McKiernan died a few days ago, and she was part of this show. And uh, while we were rehearsing this during the process of rehearsal, she was still alive. 
and recorded a poem for us, Jupiter transverses across the Saturn. And uh, she was still with us and she was struggling. And uh, perhaps there's something in the fact that she's leaving as we close in on solstice. And if there's light here on earth and there must be light on the other side for her. Uh, she was a beloved uh, Midwestern poet from uh, the Twin Cities. She has many books out. I suggest you uh, check them out. But she was also a social activist and did work among the poorest of the poor. And uh, her friends said she was full of grace and light and simply a wonder. So this is the section now uh, we're dedicating to Ethna McKiernan, who has just passed. Um, so let's go into that now. Uh, Anne and Charlie have created a video and soundscape to go with it. And this is the one that has New Grange Island uh, or Ireland with the Metholithic uh, rocks where the solstice comes in. I misspoke earlier, I think. but this is the one uh, where you're gonna see the, the video with the light and solstice. So Anne and Charlie, uh, why don't you take us away with this one? And Ethel. Hi, I'm Ethna McKiernan, friend of Charlie and Anne's, and I'm going to read a poem written about six or eight months ago called Jupiter Crosses Saturn. A year of pandemic, weariness, and fear. The year of no stars, small hope of sky gone dark. A year of pandemic, weariness, and fear. How many dead today, O oh Lord? But would two planets meet like this? Whole centuries between them. The world groans with joy despite itself. There is Jupiter, the star of miracles, with Saturn, the god of change. Every day the grass grows, a marvel that we barely notice. Change careens toward us, and we follow its bewildering scent to a forest like no other. Longing is our new friend, and the air quickens with it. We still have the dead to bury, and to bury, and to bury. In chaos and in grief, we recall the famous poet's words, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. 
and we pray. Stars and planets, constellations of our human stories, can you help us as we nudge forward to the light? Beautiful. <laughs> well done, Charlie. We'll be taking a 10 minute intermission. So if you all want to refresh your drinks, uh, feed your cats like I will be doing, uh, we'll see you in 10 minutes for the second half of our show. So don't go away or leave, uh, just hang out here and uh, take care. <laughs>